In this video, we will discuss the problem maximum sum rectangle. So the problem says that you will be given a 2D matrix that will be having the dimensions R cross C and R means the number of rows and C means the number of columns, right? And what you have to do is you have to find the maximum sum sub matrix in it, right? So suppose that this particular matrix has been given to you that has four rows and five columns. So in this particular uh, matrix, what you have to do is you have to find the sub matrix which is having the maximum sum. So you can see that the sub matrix is starting from the second row, ending at the last row and starting from the second column, ending at the last column. That is this sub matrix that is having the elements minus three, four, two, eight, ten and one, minus one, one and seven. It is the, it is the sub matrix that is having the maximum sum, right? So then suppose let's say that we have another case where we have a matrix of let's say 2 cross 2 size and the elements are minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and minus 4, right? So in this case, you can see that this particular sub matrix that is just containing one element that is minus 1, that will be the sub matrix that will have the maximum sum. Now, what you can think of is, if you are thinking in terms of a brute force manner, right? So maybe what you can think of is that you can generate all the matrix, right? You can generate, let's say what you can do is you can generate all sub matrix, right? And then what you can do is you can find the sum of all those sub matrices and then you can simply return the maximum sum, right? That is what you can do, but this is going to take a lot of time, right? First of all, you have to generate all the sub matrix that will take a lot of time. Then you have to find the sum of all those sub matrices and then you will return this, return the maximum sum. This will take a lot of time, right? Instead, what you can think of is you can first of all think in terms of a simpler manner, right? Basically, what you have to do, the question says that you have to find the maximum sum sub matrix right and what is a sub matrix sub matrix in is 2d in nature right it's 2d it's a 2d array now what like it's a 2d array right now what you are what you can think of is you can think of how to find the maximum sum sub array right how to find the maximum sum sub array that is nothing but a 1d question right that is nothing but a 1d question and for that we know that we use the cadence algorithm right we use nothing but the cadence algorithm so what can you do? Can you apply the cadence algorithm in uh, for finding the maximum sum sub matrix as well? Yes, you can do that, right? Basically, what does the cadence algorithm does? So basically, the cadence algorithm says that suppose that we had uh, four elements and the element was let's say first element was let's say minus one, then the next element let's say was three, next element let's say was five, another element let's say was what? Uh, let's say it was minus uh, seven, right? If this this was the sub array, so in this you can see that the maximum sum sub array would be nothing but 3 and 5, right? And that is what the cadence algorithm would return. But how does it work? So basically, you can see that the sum till here is minus 1. Then will you make it 2? No. That is that is that that means that you are not considering this and this element, right? As a sub matrix. Why? Because because why you are not considering this as a sub array? Because you will, why you will add a, if the current sum till here is minus 1, then adding it to a positive number decreases the number, right? So that's why it will not give me the maximum sum, right? So I should neglect this negative number and I should make a new sub array. I should consider the new sub array starting from this index, right? So I'll consider it. So this is three, this will be eight. And then uh, up till here it is eight. So this will be the, this sum will be one, right? So if I consider this, this sub array, so it will have the sum one, but this particular sub array three and five will have the sum as eight, right? So that's how the cadence algorithm gives me the answer in order of n time for a particular normal 1D array, right? But how do you uh, how do you approach this particular question in terms of a 2d array right how can we implement this particular uh, concept in a 2d array so let's say that you have been given a matrix that is of size 4 cross 4 right suppose that a matrix is there for you and that uh, matrix is having a size of 4 cross 4 so what you can think of is you can think of applying the cadence algorithm in a very simpler manner, right? So what you will do is you will first of all stick yourself, right? You will say that, okay, but what if your eyes, uh, your uh, currently you're fixed at the first row, right? You'll fix yourself at the, at the first row and you'll say that, what if I just consider the first row, right? What if I just consider the first row? If I just consider the first row, let's say the elements are one, two, zero and four, right? So in that case, let's say if the elements are like this, right? So, uh, or if, if the elements are like this, right? So you are considering just the first uh, first uh, sub array, right? First uh, matrix, first sub matrix, right? This particular row only you are considering at, as the sub matrix. So in this case, you can say that now you will say that, okay, this is the, uh, this is the sub array that I have. Uh, this is the sub matrix that I have. And now I'll try to apply the cadence algorithm on it, right? So if you apply the cadence algorithm, so you'll see that the maximum sum is nothing but 70, right? So you, in that case, you will say that, okay, I'll include all, all this completely, right? Now, 
what what is the next procedure right so next up what you will do is you will say that uh, after that you're you're currently you're fixed at this particular index right and now you will say that uh, now starting from this i'll include this particular matrix that is this and this i'll include both of them right i'll include both of them so if you if you include both of them so what is it going to look like suppose this is the situation right uh, give me a second so basically what will happen uh, you will consider this particular thing completely right and that is nothing but 1, 2, 3 and then this, right? So basically the element will be 1, 2, 0 and 4. Then this particular element will be what? Uh, let's say it is, uh, let's say 5. Let's say I uh, mark it as 5. Then let's say minus 1, then 2 and then 4, right? And then let's say this is what? Minus 1, 2 and 4, right? So after this, what I'll say is that I am considering a single a normal array, right? Because I have to apply the Cadence algorithm on that particular array. So this particular array that I had, uh, the 1D array, it will contain the sum of these two these two indexes right that is nothing but this so that this will be six this will be what uh, this will be nothing but uh, three this will be two and this will be eight right so now i can apply the cadence algorithm on this particular uh, this particular matrix that i have right i in, on this particular matrix i can apply the cadence algorithm let's suppose that uh, i apply the cadence algorithm and suppose suppose assume right so in this way i can uh, i can apply right then after that i'll consider this so this completely i'll consider right i'll consider it as uh, like this from the first row till the third row i'll consider it and then uh, then i will add the sum right so this is how it's going to look like right so every time i'll be doing this part right so suppose that uh, con currently i'm considering this much part right so what i can say is that suppose uh, this is the current matrix that i'm having right so the uh, currently i'll store it in a in a 1d uh, 1d array right the overall sum of it i'll store it in a 1d array and what i'll do is i'll apply the cadence algorithm on this and suppose that the cadence algorithm uh, tells me that this particular uh, this particular uh, this particular region i'm going to select right so that that is the sum that i'll select so that will basically indicate that i'll consider this particular complete region right this particular region that that is i'll consider this particular region right that will be the sub matrix right suppose that if the cadence algorithm uh, tells me that this is the maximum sum right suppose that the cadence algorithm tells me that the maximum sum is this part right if the cadence algorithm tells me that this is the maximum sum in this particular array 1d array that uh, that is containing the sum of this index this index this index and this index right so in that case what does it mean so it basically indicates that this is the particular uh, this is the particular sum right this particular part uh, this thing this will be the maximum sum sub array right so that sub maximum sum sub matrix right so that's how we can uh, we can basically store all of it in a single dimensional array and then we can do it now right so after that you will consider it for uh, four cross four size completely right starting from the very first till this part right and you will have this stored in the sub matrix so if you are considering this part so that means that this whole part will be considered right this whole sub matrix will be considered now let's try and understand what will happen in case if we uh, try to do it in the next fashion so what what you will do is after that is as I told you, right, initially you had to fix it. Initially, initially you had to fix yourself. Now, what I will say is that now what you do is you fix yourself at the second row, right? Now you fix yourself at the second row and now you consider that, okay, what if the just the second row is there, right? If just the second row is there, then this particular uh, single dimensional array will store the sum of this particular region, right? After that, what you do is you consider that, okay, this and this, right? So now you consider the, uh, the, the row 2 and the uh, row 3 as well, right? And the columns, how will you select the columns? So columns will be selected. Columns will be taken care of by the cadence algorithm, right? As I said, if you're considering just this much part, so that this that will be this much part, right? So that's how the columns uh, part is going to get sorted out, right? After this part is done, right? So after this is done, so you'll consider this part as well, right? So this complete part, right? After this is, so that is nothing but you're considering row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4 at the same time, right? After that, what you will do is you'll run on a, you'll run on a, a loop. Uh, like you'll start from the row 3 right you'll say that okay what if my row 3 is my starting point right so you'll say that okay my row 3 is my starting point and if my row 3 is a starting point so one one time i'll just consider consider it and i'll try to find the cadence uh, i'll apply the cadence algorithm on it then i'll uh, i'll say that okay what if the row 3 and row 4 i am considering this particular uh, sub array this particular sub matrix right so in, the, in this particular sub matrix what is the maximum uh, what is the maximum so i can find it using the cadence algorithm suppose that the cadence algorithm tells me this part so that means this particular sub matrix is having the maximum sub right and after that i'll move to the last index as well that like I, i'll uh, include the last row only right i'll say that okay what if it's just the last row so i'll consider it as well and then after that i do not have anything right so basically the there will be a loop running right there will be a loop up and running running and what what that particular loop is going to do for me 
So that particular loop, uh, I'll run a particular loop for the rows, right? I'll run a particular loop for the rows where I'll fix the current ith row, right? I'll run a loop i that that will fix me the current row, right? After that, I also need a, uh, to run another loop, uh, uh, another loop, uh, another loop for the rows, right? Maybe I can say it as j or anything. I run, an, I need to run another loop so that I can change. I can keep on changing, right? Uh, let's suppose that my this was my ith row, so I'll change this row. Like first of all, I'll be here only, right? First of all, I'll consider that uh, my jth row is starting from this only, right? So that just the first row is considered. Then after that, this and this, then this and this, right? So that all the combinations of rows are considered, right? After this, as you know, that I need to run for the columns as well, right? So I'll run for the columns as well. So the overall complexity of the code is going to look like uh, r into r into c, that is r square c, right? Let's try and quickly implement the code for this particular approach and see how we can uh, solve this, right? So what I will be having, right? So I'll be doing, first of all, I'll be having this particular thing that is the uh, that is the 2D matrix, right? And it's named as M. Let's let's say that I name it as, as mat, right? So I'll be having this, I'll be having the rows and the columns, right? So what first of all, what I what I will do for this particular function is I just need to find the maximum sum, right? So what should I do, right? So first of all, I should say that I'll initialize my maximum to like I'll I'll initialize my let's say result to nothing but int min right i'll initialize my result to nothing but int min once i have done once i'm done with this part so what i will do is i'll run a loop first loop i'll start int i i will start from where uh, i is gonna start from nothing but this part i will be starting from zero right i'll be starting from the zero th row right i start from zero i will be lesser than r right and then i'll do an i plus plus that is keeping the row fixed right first this will run till order of r right that is the number of rows that are there right after that what i said i said that i'll be having a vector right i'll be having a vector let's say v right i'll be having a vector c that whose size will be the number of columns right its size will be the number of columns let's say i name it as small c and i also name it as small r right i name it as small r for convenience right so what I'll be having is I'll be having a vector that will be storing the sum. So what I'm saying is I'll start another loop right for the rows that will be running. So I can say that I'll start the J that will start from the ith row and J is going to be lesser than R and I'll do J plus plus right. After that what I will be doing is I'll be running for the columns as well. So let's say int I can mark it as column and column will be starting from where column will be starting from zero and column will be lesser than nothing but C and I'll do column plus plus right. So that is how I'll be iterating through all these matrices that I'm trying to consider. Right, after this part is done, so basically, what should I do? I should simply store, uh, I should simply store the, uh, uh, I should simply store the, the, uh, the overall matrices in the, in the single dimensional vector, right? So that is what I'll do. I'll say that vector of column, uh, right, for this particular column, the answer is going to be nothing but, like, I'll, I'll keep on adding, right? So vector of column plus is going to, because I'm adding all the columns, right? Notice this part, that what, what will I do, right? Uh, let's suppose that there was a condition like this. Suppose that I was considering just the first two rows kind of thing, right? So this will be the situation, right? Suppose that I was just considering the first two rows. Give me a second. So if a situation like this was there, right? So this point kind of a situation was there. So in that case, what you will uh, what you will say is that you will uh, store all of it in a single dimensional array, right? Like that is nothing but named as V, right? So I'll store it this so that this particular column, so the, the sum of these two columns, right? Sum of the first of uh, the the column one that is there so all the rows that are there this and this i'll store it in this index right then this and this i'll store it in this index this and this i'll store it in this index right so that is what is happening in this particular uh, loop right so v of column plus is equal to nothing but what uh, matrix of what uh, j and column right so that is what i'll do right after this part is done so let's say after after it is calculated for a particular column right so i can say that what i will do is i need to find the maximum right so i'll say result is equal to nothing but maximum of what maximum of the result that i've seen up till now comma i'll apply the cadence algorithm right so let's say i write a function or uh, let's say i use a function let's say uh, let's say i uh, have a temp that gives me uh, nothing but the function right uh, i have written a function that is uh, let's say i write a function that is that applies the cadence algorithm and in that particular function what i'll pass is i'll pass let's say let's say what i'll pass is i'll pass the current vector v and i'll also pass the number of columns right so that is nothing but the uh, current current vector right that is for which i want to find the maximum sum right suppose this particular uh, like this particular vector v is storing the current 1d array right so i want to apply cadence on it to get the ma get the maximum sum sub array right so that is what it will give so this temp will store the maximum sum sub array for the current vector v right and i'll store it in the result 
and possibly what I what I need to do is I should be returning it in the end, right? I should return it. But I need to make this Cadence algorithm function that that gives me the maximum sum so maximum sub array sum for the 1D array, right? So what I will do is I'll say that int Cadence. I'll have a function, let's say int Cadence, and in that particular function, what I'll do is I'll have nothing but vector of int and v right vector of int v comma let's say int n that is the size of the vector right and then what i will do is let's say i'll mark uh, my int uh, maximum to be nothing but a int min right because uh, initially I, I i have to assume it as int min then what i will say is that i'll mark my uh, let's say sum current sum as zero then i'll start iterating through all the indexes right so i'll say int uh, int nothing but i starts from zero I is going to be lesser than and, and I will do an I plus plus then what I will do is I'll say that sum plus is equal to what sum plus is equal to nothing but V of I right Cut current uh, current index I'll add and I will see that if the current sum right if the current sum is greater than the maximum sub array sum that I've seen up till now in that case what I will say is that I need to update it so I'll say that MX becomes what MX changes to nothing but let's instead of this let's do it like this so I'll say that MX is equal to nothing but what MX will be nothing but it will become the sum right it will get updated right after this part is done so I will check if my sum becomes negative right as I told you Cadence algorithm is based on this concept that if the sum becomes negative in that case I'll mark my sum as zero and I'll restart right that's what happens and after this part is done so I'll simply return MX right that is the maximum sub array sum and this is that is how I'm going to do it right and after this part is done so let me check if I have uh, done it right so J starts from I J is going to be lesser than R and I'll do a J plus plus then the columns are also starting and I'm adding the columns then temp will store the maximum sub array sum for this particular 1D array that is uh, that is containing the sum of the sub matrix that I'm, I'm currently considering right and then let's try and compile this and see if we have any compilation errors in this or it works so it seems to work on the samples we are getting the output as 29 let's quickly submit this So you can see that this particular problem was able to pass all the 105 test cases, right? And as I mentioned that this particular problem, uh, it has been asked in the companies like Amazon, it has been asked in DSHO, it has also been asked in Walmart, it has been asked in Flipkart, Samsung. So a lot of product based companies usually ask this particular problem. So that's why that is uh, how you should do this particular problem. And the overall time complexity, as I told you, will be nothing but R cross C, right? And uh, like uh, it will be nothing but R cross R cross C because we are uh, iterating through the rows two times, right? So it will be nothing but the number of rows into number of rows into number of columns, right? That is kind of n cube in nature, right? And the space complexity will be R cross C because uh, like a space complexity will not be R cross C for us. Basically, it will be order of C, right? That is nothing but the columns because we are doing what we are just uh, iterate, uh, iterate. We are just making a single dimensional uh, vector to just store the uh, to just store the uh, sum of a particular sum till a particular row right that is what we are doing uh, if you in case if you like the explanation if you like the uh, explanation overall so you can write uh, clear plus plus in the chat right and make sure to hit the like button thanks a lot for watching